All right. Hey, besties. Hey, besties. How are we doing? Uh, we're back. We're back with another episode of the podcast. This is episode 167, and I know that. All right? And I know my episode number is all good. That's all good. I know my episodes. I know it. And for that, I get a quick little... You know? I, and I deserve that. I deserve that. I worked... I work really hard at what I do, okay? And some of it goes unnoticed, but... You know, it's fine. It's a... It's a noble, thankless job that I do. But, uh... I don't, I don't get in for it for the... You know, for the... For the glory of the friggin' wrecking. <laughs> it's a thankless job being a podcaster, being a podcast host. Got a haircut yesterday. Uh, we're changing topics, by the way. Got a haircut yesterday. Um, you know what? Let me switch my, my freaking headphone thing. I like hearing myself when I talk, you know? It makes it seem like I'm actually recording something. Because I'm just talking. I'm like, I can't even hear myself. You know what I mean? Um, what was I saying? I got a haircut yesterday. So I still got, oh, whoa. I still got a, still got a mullet, but just got it, just got it trimmed up. Felt good, you know? My dog got a haircut yesterday, too. Same place. Dropped my dog off at the, the groomer. And I was like, you guys got time for me, too? You guys got time for me, also? And they're like, are you a dog? And I was like, um, <laughs> I mean, I can't be, yo. You know? Arf, arf, you know? Arf, 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 arf. You know, I sort of started barking at him. I went, arf. And he's like, okay, sure, get back there. And then I sort of ran on all fours, lifted my leg up, pissed on a guy. And then they're like, yeah. And I was like, sorry, I'm a little doggy. And then I went to the, and I got a haircut all doggy style. I got a haircut doggy style. So that was cool. I am, I'm fucking kidding. Obviously, uh, my friend Sid cut my hair, and she fucking killed it. She did a great job, um, you know, and that's all good. She didn't cut my dog's hair. That was the groomer who did that, all right? Get it right, okay? Two separate haircuts took place at the same time. Uh, one for me, one for my dog, <laughs> one for my doggo, you know? Isn't that so funny when people say that? word they call people doggos what's going on it's like they're already a dog you know that's already their name and then you're just adding a you're just adding a freaking o to the end of it and i'm here for it guys i'm realizing i forgot to get an advice question for later in the episode so i'm trying to do that i'm trying to find it oh and obviously what? Okay, we'll figure that out later. Um, we got some stuff to talk about this week. All right. Um, we do. We got at least f- two things that we wrote down <laughs> that we're gonna talk about. First off, let's just fucking get into it, dude. All right. I'm done with the small talk, dude. I'm done with this. All right. I'm a I'm just ready. I want to vibe. I want you to tell me what you think about, like, death and stuff. You know what I mean? You know when people say that shit? Fuck small talk. I want you to talk about the moon the moon landing. <laughs> Fuck small talk. Let's talk if the, about the moon landing, if it actually happened or not. Big talk. I want to talk about big talk. And what's bigger than the moon? Nothing. Wah! Huh, yeah. I mean, sorry. The moon. Huh, yeah. What is bigger than it? Absolutely nothing. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Nothing is bigger than the moon. All right. And I think I would know. All right. I'm in Canada, which is northern, north, pretty north, 
which is up. Okay, north is up. And I'm therefore I'm closer to the moon than all of you guys are in the States. I'm up. All right, I'm going way up. Curtis stock is going up. And my and I'm also to the moon. Curtis stock is going to the moon because I'm closer to the moon because I'm northern and north is up. We the north, you know, we the moon. We are the moon. We are the children. <laughs> Dude, this is the worst podcast in the world. But I'm having fun with it, and I always do. So if you hate it, then then please reconsider. Please reconsider, or else I'll fucking really be sad. And you don't want that, all right? You don't want that on your conscience. You're already... A t- okay, we're going to talk about... Our favorite guy to shit on, one of our favorite CEOs to freaking take a hot steamy dump on, Zark, Mark Fuckerberg, okay, the Zuck, all right, so Facebook, if you guys don't know, Facebook, um, they're rebranding, they're rebranding, they're going to be, they're called, they're going to be called Meta now. Uh, and this tweet here says, uh, I'll just fucking screen record, I guess. Um, it says here, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said his company is rebranding itself as Meta in an effort to encompass. It's disgusting. You're going to make an effort to encompass. We really want to get into a bunch of come and piss. So we're called Meta now. Uh, okay, an effort to encompass its virtual reality vision for the future. Slippery slope here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess they're like, they don't want to go... Facebook, that sounds like... I hope that didn't pick up on the mic. It sounded like a fart, but it wasn't. Um, but... What was I saying? Yeah, they want to do... They want to step away from the, you know, Facebook usual shit. You know, like the minion memes... And the, um, you know, the fucking propaganda. They want to move away from all that. And they want to do the virtual reality. They're going into that. The metaverse. So it's, it's, they're making the metaverse, which is like ready player one type shit. When you like get home after a long day of, you know, fucking working a toll booth. And then you, you're sitting down all day and then you get, finally get home. You're like, fuck yeah, dude. And then you, you fuck it, you strap in, you plug in like in the Matrix, put your fucking goggles on, and then you get to live your fantasy life. You get to be a, a fucking elephant stripper. You get to be whatever you want. You get to be a sexy elephant, you know, who's like swinging your hot fucking trunk around, you know, in the metaverse, swinging your fucking lengthy trunk in the metaverse man it's the dream where the future is now all right how much you want to bet all right over under how much you want to bet there's going to be an animal strip club in the metaverse you can go get a private dance from a puma (laughs) all right you know there'll be a fucking sloth on the friggin' pole, you know? Throw throw a cup, throw a bunch of singles at a frickin' snake, you know? And the bouncer is gonna be a kangaroo because they bounce. And that's so cute and funny. Uh, it's so cute and funny of me to say that. Bruh. But like, but that's what that's what they're going. Facebook is basically like gearing up to you know get ready for the fucking animal strip club, virtual animal strip club. Um, but dude, the I don't know why they get Mark Zuckerberg to keep doing these. You know, I don't know why they keep getting him to be like the face. I get he like I get like he made Facebook right. Like he does he fucking they made a movie about it right. Uh, but like he's not a he's not like likable he's not relatable he's not like comfortable on camera like literally it looks like every time a camera is pointed at him they use a camera that also has a bazooka on top of it 
You know how like some cameras have like microphones on the top, right? He gets one. He's like, "Oh, can you put a bazooka on top? I want to be fucking petrified whenever I talk, look into a lens. I want to be, I want to be fucking looking down the barrel of a fucking bazooka. I want to look down the barrel of a rocket launcher. Okay, before we launch this new product. Okay, because that's the only way I can get off. <laughs> All right, because you know billionaires are fucking psycho. You know, that's like the only way they can fucking climax is if they got like a lit if they get like a a live grenade in their fucking mouth. That's the only way they can actually jizz because they've like done everything else, you know what I mean? Billionaires are fucking weird, bro. I have a th- I have a theory, man. Every billionaire has eaten a guy. That's what I think. Elon, Jeff, Mark, they've all chowed down on a fucking fella. I know they have. I know it. Like, I don't know it, but like, I have a feeling, you know? I got a feeling that billionaires fucking eat people. Um, But let's watch this video, okay? Let's watch this fucking announcement video because it's so funny. And it just goes, just get a new guy. You know, get Jesse Eisenberg. He did a great job. He did so much better than Mark at being Mark, you know? Jeffrey, Jesse Eisenberg is a better Mark Zuckerberg than Mark Zuckerberg is, you know what I mean? But enough of me blabbing. Let's watch this shit. So let's start by exploring what different kinds of metaverse experiences could feel like. Starting with the most important experience of all. God, he is truly haunting to look at. And I'm... I usually don't like going after people's appearances. But the keyword there is people. Not a guy. You know what I mean? That's a bowling pin. That's a bowling pin with a with a wig on. Hi, welcome. Uh, well, let's take a look at the the new, the great new possibilities of the metaverse could be, could show you. And um, please don't roll a big heavy ball down that lane and knock me over. I'd, it would really hurt a lot because <laughs> I'm a fucking bowling pin. You know, that's like my Mark Zuckerberg impression. <laughs> oh, oh, the good thing. That, oh, a good gutter ball. Thank good for me. I get to live another minute. He is a bowling pin. Ball. Connecting with people. <laughs> okay, guy. If you're just listening to the audio, Mark Zuckerberg is like talking. Uh and he the camera pans and rotates and he like looks around to the room as it like turns into this like metaverse room. And the expression on his face is terrifying. Literally looks like he looks like an animatronic. <laughs> Dude. Like that's the look that you give like if you saw a tree falling on your house, you know what I mean? Like you're just so like you're just so over it you're just so over life itself that you like kind of laugh like there's no real joy behind those eyes you know what i mean imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space it is- okay imagine you put on your glasses or your headset and you're instantly in your home space you know Sorry to sound like a boomer, but like you can already do that. If you put glass, look, did it, just did it. I just put glass on my face and I'm in my home space. You don't need to invent meta. You don't need to do it. I already did it. Beat you, t- beat you. I beat you there. Hey, Mark. I beat you there. You missed the mark. <laughs> hey, Mark. You missed the mark on that one. All right. I did it. They fucking beat you, okay? Imagine putting on your fucking goggles and you don't have to be rammed by a bowling ball every day of your life. Imagine not being a a fucking bowling pin. It's parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. 
and it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. <laughs> hey! Of whatever you find most beautiful. Not, I'm not a real guy, and I never was, and I never will. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. Dude, get a new guy, you know what I mean? Get a new fella. Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. You don't have to be the guy, Mark. You don't have to be the guy. Get someone we all like. Get like Aegis Elba or something. You know? Get Sean Evans. Get fuck. Get likable guys. It doesn't have to be you. Or, at the very least, if you don't get a new guy, get a new haircut. What is your... And that's coming from me, dude. I have a mullet. And you got a Lego guy haircut. He's like, well, I like it's practical. It's a practical haircut. I don't need to... I just wake up and it's, it's ready to go. I can, you know... See, if I had long hair, I get smacked by bowling balls all the time. It's going to get all messed up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yeah, perfect outfit, man. The fit you're already wearing. In Mark Zuckerberg's wildest dreams, in his perfect world, in the metaverse, he's just him. He's just him. Are you fucking kidding me, bro? If I, if I have an avatar in the metaverse, it's going to be like 30 feet tall, Okay, it's going to be like the sickest jawline. I'm going to be like gold plated. I'm going to be a gold guy. And I'm going to have like, like, like the, like the coolest hats, you know, and I'm going to have like a, I'm going to, I'm going to have swords on my back, you know, I'm going to have swords on my back, you know, those like. You know, you know those belts of like just ammo, like bullets on the belt. I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna be thirty feet tall, c- c- gold guy with swords on my back and just ammo. No guns, no guns. Okay, I got swords, but I'm gonna have ammo. <laughs> and I'm gonna be walking around the metaverse like this, and I'll be stomping on little friggin' losers like Mark. You know, have fun. You have all the technology, right? Be a huge guy. Boy. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, hi. Mark. What's up, Mark? Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome to the metaverse. I did not hit her. I did not. Dude, we're fucked. We're fucked, man. That's it. That's what I mean. Man, like, I at least make these things, like, funny, right? I know they have to, like, please, like, shareholders and stuff and like there's the constant urge to like you know keep making money and you know constantly uh you know increase your profit and stuff like that all that shit and they have to like make sure their stock like goes up after these fucking huge announcements but like dude what if his avatar what if mark zuckerberg was like choosing his avatar in the video and it's just like this chick with like (laughs) like him in a bikini he's got like huge boobs (laughs) <laughs> like a tramp stamp and shit like a huge mohawk oh perfect dude that'd be so fucking funny man i feel like i'd be i'd be a fan of facebook meta if they did that all right meta i hardly know what okay i deserve it i deserve that That sound effect is really long. Um, just like that stripper elephant's trunk, you know what I mean? Okay, really quick story before we get into like the main f- fun that I have to really fucking talk about. But, dude, Chris Pratt. Somebody has to stop this man, okay? Somebody has to stop this man. Chris Pratt to voice Garfield in new animated feature. What's your end game, Chris? Hmm? 
What's your end game? First, it's fucking Mario, and now it's Garfield. What's next? Hmm? Scooby Doo? Huh? SpongeBob? Huh? Fucking Dilbert? Chris Pratt's gonna voice Dilbert in the R rated Dilbert movie. That's his name, right? That business guy? The comic strip? Yeah, Dilbert. I swear to God, dude. I kept, I made this joke like in my new video that he's just going to, Chris Pratt's going to just voice every character ever going forward. I'm fucking right so far. If Chris Pratt, if they make a Dilbert movie and Chris Pratt voices Dilbert, you all owe me like $500. Okay? Shake on it. Or shaking on it. If he doesn't, I don't owe you anything. But, but that's it. Okay, Chris Pratt is going to voice the lasagna-loving, Monday-hating, comic strip feline Garfield in a new animated movie. Oh, my God. What is up with Chris Pratt voicing Italians? Hmm? <laughs> is, that, is that he's cornering the market? Huh? First Mario. Okay, he's Italian. Garfield loves lasagna. Italian. He's strictly voicing beloved Italian characters. Animated Italian characters. It's fucked up, man. Is he even Italian? I don't think he is. Pratt? Chris Pratt. You know? I don't think that's an Italian name. Chris Pratt. Pratt Shuto? No. That's not the full one. Chris Pratt. Nationality. American. Yeah. Oh, I bet. That's it. Just a what, a what ethnicity? Okay, his mother. Um, what if? Okay, his mother is from Norwegian descent. Okay. I, Chris, I see. I see what you're trying to do. Okay. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to, you know, there's the market's pretty big for a, a beloved animated Italian characters, and, and you're trying to fucking steal all of them all right because who what are the other ones luigi garfield mario i mean he's not voicing luigi but i feel like he would if he could there's other ones there's other animated italians okay and I'm not Googling it right now. And I'm not... Don't worry. Yeah, Zorro. Right? Pinocchio. He's Italian, right? You got... You know, Pinocchio. Johnny Bravo is apparently Italian. So you're going to voice Johnny Bravo next, huh? Is that it? Is that it? Is is that it, Chris? Huh? I don't know, dude. I just, I mean, I had to talk about Chris again because in the last episode, two episodes ago, we were talking about how he's just going to voice every character. And look, again, Fuck, man. Okay, let's change the subject. Oh, I guess it's... Okay. It's kind of the same subject, to be honest. Okay? It's talking. We're talking about animated movies still. All right? Because there's a new trailer for... a Buzz Lightyear movie. And I just searched BuzzFeed. So... There's a new BuzzFeed Lightyear. <laughs> it's just freaking quiz their, your favorite spaghetti and to find out if you're a Harry Potter. That's my advice. I mean, that's my impression of BuzzFeed. Take, take, take a look at these to pick your favorite 
color of Bristol board and find out if you're going to be in Hogwarts. Is this dinner hack going to... Is this dinner hack the next moon? The next moon landing? Is this spaghetti rolled up in a ball for you? Yes, it is. Harry Potter. (laughs) That's BuzzFeed. You don't have to check their website. Just play that video over again. Just play my impression over again. But they're making a Buzz Lightyear movie. It's called Lightyear. Um, and you know, I just thought it was like, okay, cool, little um, a, a cool little thing, right? A nice movie, make of a Buzz. We all love Buzz Lightyear, right? Um, but Chris Evans is voicing him, so it's not Tim Allen, right? There's a whole lot of things we got to get into about this. So I hope you're ready to really dive in here, but. Once I talk, Shun, the producer of this podcast, or my good friend, he was he brought up some really good points about this, which is very interesting. I feel like we need to go over, but you know what? This trailer is a minute and a half. Let's watch it really quick so you guys know what's up. But okay, so the animation looks really good. Obviously, it's Disney Pixar. So it's okay. Origin story. It's the origin story of Buzz Lightyear. In 2022. I mean, it looks great. This is the shit I'd be doing in the metaverse, bro. So he goes to light speed. Some fucking force field. He's flying on the surface of the sun, basically. Like, right close to the sun. He's in. He's on some, like, other planet. This futuristic fucking thing. There's aliens and robots. Uh, huge space stations. Like, this is... Okay, aliens. Aliens. The old Buzz, the Buzz Lightyear suit. Okay, cool. To infinity. To infinity. And beyond. Okay, so that's the trailer. Okay, so a few things. When I first saw it, I was like, okay, so this is like, um, it's like the the cartoon, the fucking Star Command show, the cartoon. Buzz Lightyear Star Command. I loved that show. I loved the cartoon when I was a kid. So I was like, okay, this is like something like that, right? Some, you know, just like a Buzz Lightyear story. It's like the lore of whatever. It's him just, you know, flying around doing cool shit, right? That's what I thought. Um, But then Chris Pratt made an interesting tweet that sort of throws a fucking monkey wrench into the whole thing. Um, So Chris Evans tweeted this um, last year, actually. They announced this movie last year, but the trailer just came out. But we need to go over this. Um, Chris Evans responded to his own tweet of the trailer announcement, and he says, and just to be clear, this isn't Buzz Lightyear the toy. So it's not about the toy. It's not the toy. This is the origin story of the human Buzz Lightyear that the toy is based on. Which raises a, f- a few questions of just the of how this world works in Toy Story, you know? Um So they Buzz Lightyear is a real human. If Chris Evans is if what Chris Evans is saying is true, I hope you guys are on board for this. This is probably going to be the rest of the fucking podcast, but um hold on. If what Chris Evans is saying is true, during Toy Story, Toy Story and Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, fuck Toy Story 4, 
intergalactic space travel exists. There's uh, there's knowledge of aliens, robots. They can fly on the surface of the sun. But yet, like, in Toy Story, it's set in, like, the 90s, right? The first Toy Story, it's set in the 90s. There's no, like, futuristic stuff. They're driving, like, old-ass cars and shit, right? So you're telling me, like, this is about the human that the toy is based off of. So this is even before Toy Story. So this takes place in, like, what, the fucking 60s, 70s, 80s? I don't know, the 80s maybe at at the earliest? Maybe the early 90s? And you're telling me they have fucking knowledge of aliens and robots and fucking intergalactic... They can fly on the surface of the sun, but they don't have fucking cell phones yet? Huh? They're going to fucking Pizza Palace or whatever the fuck in that dingy-ass van and shit? And does that mean the little alien guys in Toy Story, are they real? And they're just making toys of them back, back, back on Earth? I mean, I wouldn't put it past us, you know, because capitalism. So, Buzz Lightyear is a human. And why would they make a toy out of a human astronaut? That seems, is he alive still? He's probably dead, right? So they must... Yeah, see what I mean? Chris Evans fucked this whole thing up. And just to be clear, he says, no, you're not making it very clear, Chris. This isn't Buzz Lightyear, the toy. This is the origin story of the human Buzz Lightyear the toy is based on. So the origin story of a human... I just don't get how they're going to explain this. Like, what is the... This is, this is fucking on my brain, dude. Because, like, I'm thinking for this, if they put out a toy version of... Once this Buzz Lightyear movie comes out and they put out a toy version of this Buzz Lightyear... It's going to have to be the original one, right? It's going to have to be the exact original one that they released in the Toy Story universe, like the one that you could buy when the first Toy Story came out. You know what I mean? Because that was the toy version of the human one. And it had Tim Allen's voice. So if they put out a fucking toy version of this human Buzz Lightyear, and it's based off of this movie, the the, the fucking Chris Evans one, and then they're wrong. Then they're fucked up because that's not the toy version of that one. You know what I mean? And that would also mean... Would that also mean that we are... Does this... Uh, see what I mean? Like, what is there... The only, like, logical way to explain this is, like... Because there's no way, I I just like to think that like if you're in the, if you write a movie that takes place in the 90s, there's like primitive technology, right? There's like landline phones, and that's it. You expect me to believe that like five years ago, prior, there was an astronaut flying on the surface of the sun and flying through space? No, it doesn't work like that. Technology does not work like that. Okay. So I think the only way they can really explain this is if Buzz Lightyear... The only way they can explain this is the Lightyear, the Buzz Lightyear movie. You know that meme of fucking in the Always Sunny of the guy? He's like pointing out the fucking cork board with all the red yarn. That's what I feel like right now. But, you know, the only way they can describe this if if, if Buzz, Light, the Light, Buzz Lightyear movie is a movie that that like Andy would watch in the Toy Story universe 
but like it's an exaggerated m- movie, like a fictionalized biopic sort of. It's loosely based on the Buzz Lightyear astronaut. For some reason, there's an astronaut named Buzz Lightyear who like maybe went to the moon and, and back, and then he like signed his rights away to some fucking you know Pixar company to like make some fictional exaggeration with aliens and stuff and then after that was so successful that they made toys and shit about it that would then come to life but then why would you exaggerate that that's so weird also when when buzz lightyear comes to life he thinks he's a fucking space guy he thinks he's a he thinks he's like a astronaut, right? And then Woody has to be like, you're a child's plaything. You're a toy, remember? And that's like this big thing that he has to like come to terms with. And what does that mean for like, is that strictly, fo- it, does that only happen to Buzz? Or does that happen to Woody as well? Right? Is every Buzz Lightyear doll uploaded a fucking consciousness of this exaggerated astronaut? I don't know. Same thing's going to happen for a fucking Woody movie? Are they going to do that too? I don't know, man. This is fucked up. Let me know your guys' theories, if I'm even making any sense here. But Chris Evans fucking, he ruined everything with that tweet. Just to be clear, this isn't Buzz Lightyear the toy. Is the origin story the human Buzz Lightyear the toy is based on? So it's based. Literally, that's the only way I can describe it. Is if this movie is an exaggerated story tell, retelling, uh, like a v- greatly exaggerated story of an astronaut that like went to space. But could you imagine if they put out like a fucking, uh, is it Neil Armstrong? Yeah, I was going to say Lance Armstrong. That's the fucking biker guy. Um, if, 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 fucking Holly, if, if Hollywood came out with a Neil Armstrong movie of him fucking traveling, he's flying into the sun and he's killing aliens and robots and shit, flying around with like wings and like a cool astronaut suit, and then they made a Neil Armstrong action figure, that'd be fucked up, man. That'd be weird as hell. But that's what they're doing. That's what they expect us to believe, Hollywood. Come on, man. I hope they explain it. I gotta rewatch Toy Story. Fucking see if I can figure this out. I'll figure it out, guys. I'll get down to the bottom of it. But that's my theory on what this Buzz movie is. But like, you gotta think about shit before you tweet that out, man. Right? Because even the the responses on Twitter are, uh, yeah. Because people say if it's the younger Buzz, you would think Tim Allen would voice the role still. Yeah, you'd think, right? There's just so... Sorry, I'm trying to look through these fucking... Okay, so here's a question. But why wouldn't the toy sound like the human it was based on? Okay, if the Toy Story, in the Toy Story universe, there was a real Buzz Lightyear. The toy we see in the Toy Story movie is an action figure based off that person. Chris is voicing the real person. Buzz, the toy is based off of. So yeah, that's that makes no fucking sense. I'm sorry I'm getting so worked up about this, but I said this right at the start. But like, you, you expect me to believe this real guy in the Toy Story universe is doing all this shit? Maybe Maybe they are. And like, why are you, why are the toys so worried about? I feel like if you as a society can like travel to different fucking galaxies and stuff, you wouldn't really be scared of like moving, moving toys. You'd be like, oh, that's probably some like alien technology or something, right? I can I can get with aliens and intergalactic travel and flying on the sun and. A fucking intergalactic astronaut hero named Buzz, but toys that sort of move? Now that's crazy, right? 
That's so weird. I don't know. I could talk about this forever, dude. But I won't <laughs> because um, that's freaking lame. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, okay, I want to see if I can do a quick advice thing to wrap this up. But we're at like 40-something. And, okay, maybe I'll do one. Um, dude, all of these are, all these get freaking university questions, man. Just drop out, you know? Just fucking give up, okay? It's not worth it. <laughs> and, hey, guys, stop signing my, signing me up for shit. Oh, my God. So annoying. I can't even find real advice. Cash app funds sent to me. No. Okay. Here's one. Let's do I'll hit the fucking button, dude. I don't care. I'll hit the fucking button, dude. Um, uh, we could do some advice. Uh, uh, Damn, I need a jingle for my advice segment. Jingle, jingle, jingle for my advice segment. For my advice segment. Jingle for my advice segment. Okay. This comes from Muffin shirt. Muffin shirt. Hi, Curtis. My tattoo artist is an anti-vaxxer, and it really sucks because I have a few tattoos of her, and I've never found anyone that fits my style and preferences as much as her. But now I found out she's an anti-vaxxer. I already tried talking to her, but as you can imagine, that didn't help. We agreed to disagree. Do I still go to her or try to find someone else? Love from Belgium. I've been watching her podcast every week for the past two years or so, mostly while I paint. So thanks for always being there. Oh, no problem, dude. Uh, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Because, like, they're, um... It's so weird because they are, like... Tattoo artists got to be, like, so careful with, like... It's really funny to think about a tattoo artist that's an anti-vaxxer. Because, like, they're so careful with, like, spreading germs... And shit, you know, like, they got to wipe down everything. Like, tattoo artists are so clean. Like, they have to be. So that's really funny to think that they're like, I don't want... Yeah, I don't care about spreading germs. I don't I don't give a fuck about that. I don't care about spreading diseases. Now, move, let me wipe down and sterilize this entire room after every person is in here. You know what I mean? It is very funny. It's also annoying because, like, just fucking get it, you know? Oh, just get it, you know? Um, Could just fucking get it, right? It's crazy, man. Uh, Honestly, dude, I think just... If you don't want to fucking support them, I don't... I, you know, I, I understand. I feel like... You could find another fucking tattoo artist that'll do stuff for you that'll, that is, you know... Because you don't want to support someone who's doing that and putting someone in danger, right? I think that's I think that's what it is. Um, fuck, man, just get the fuck. I saw it, dude. I feel like I talk about this every fucking podcast, but just fucking get it, you know. Just get the fucking thing, get the fucking vaccine. It's literally so easy, bro. You know. I know. I'm saying like some people have like phobias and shit. Like I get it. I'm not saying it's like hey, just do it. Fuck it. You know. It's hard for people. I get it. And like. Obviously, very fucking privileged spot where I'm at. But still, it's like, I don't know. It's tough, man. It's tough to fucking talk about. But um, I didn't know them very well. But someone in my family just fucking died of COVID. So um, shit's fucking real, man. Shit's real. Uh, it's crazy, dude. And it's obviously the, the death count or whatever. In Canada is a lot lower than America, but still, it's it's happening, man. I literally just found out that it, you know, that someone, my family, fucking died of it. So it's like it's it's crazy, man. Just get it, you know. <laughs> Pretty easy. Sorry to be a freaking a uh, preacher, but you know. All right, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. I think. Thanks for listening. Uh, good to be back home here. Um, I got 
a very special episode coming out next week with the actor who played Danny Jr. in Goblin, uh, which is the movie I just made fun of on my main channel. So that's going to be really fun. Stay tuned for that. Uh, the fucking West... I think his name's uh, Weston. Am I a fucking bad guy? Weston, yeah. The guy's name is Weston. He's super chill, and I'm excited to uh, to talk to him about that fucking movie, man. So, um, you know, subscribe so you don't miss it. And, um, yeah, thanks for chilling. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm going to fucking go to the Animal Strip Club. Goodbye. Whoa.